Good evening and welcome to another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Jay Pushkar. He's Mike Fenner and we'll hear from Tom Decker shortly. The playoffs have finally arrived in high school boys basketball as teams around the area are buying for district championships, including in Class 6A, the semifinals taking place down in Grove City. Ike Herster and Kennedy Catholic have knocked off Erie a couple of times this winter, but the old adage is it's hard to beat a quality team three times. The Royals had their chance to get to the D10 finals of the win tonight. Well, let's head to Grove City High School for the highlights. We'll pick it right up with the inbounds play for Kennedy Catholic. And just as mentioned, Ike Herster drives baseline and scores. He had a great night in this one. Later on, he's running the break. Eventually finishes the play. He poured in 22 points. Royals counter, though, offensively. John Woodward pops for three. He scored 14. Then it's Jameen Smith finding Jamie Smith down low. He led the Royals with 16. More from the black and purple this time off the offensive rebound. The big man. Ken Nixon skies for the rebound and the putback. Look at the emotion of the Royals. They go on to win this one 61 to 52. Erie High will meet McDowell in the Tuesday championship game at Edinburgh's Macomb Fieldhouse beginning at 8:30 for the Class 6A district title. Moving to Class 3A, how about Erie First Christians Aaron Collins going for 45 points to eclipse the 1,000 point mark earlier this week in a non-region win at Lawrence, Ohio. The Eagles are loving life with Collins, but they mm -hmm. need another big night in their first round matchup at Girard, a team they fell to just a week ago, 43 to 36 at home. Eagles up 3 late in the first quarter at Girard, and after scoring those 45 on Wednesday, Tonight to go over a thousand. Aaron Collins, well, he started off well. A buzzer beater at the end of the first quarter from three to make it a six point Erie First Christian Academy lead after a quarter. In the second, Connor Zimmer hits Austin Barrett, who nails the corner three for the Yellow Jackets. To the fourth quarter we go. Erie First running away with it, leading now by 13 points off this three from Davidis Labricus. He had 18 to lead Erie First, looking like they're well on their way to a win and into the next round. 36 23, but the Jackets hanging tough. Big Ethan gets the hoop and the harm. He had 10. Collins, a big drive and finish down the lane. He had 12 plus the foul there. Eight point Erie first lead. Gerard now down four with three to play. Barrett open from the wing. Connects on the triple try. He had 17 to lead Gerard. It's a one point game. Tied at 42, less than 90 seconds. It's Zimmer to the hoop. Scores. Great fake and finish plus a foul. Gerard up a pair. One last chance for Erie first. Labricus. And this one goes off the mark, gets the rebound. Gerard rallies from down 13 points in the fourth quarter to beat Erie First Christian Academy 46 42. They'll advance to play Franklin next week. Finally, you know, we made a couple baskets. We got in a little bit of a rhythm. Uh, but, you know, Erie First gave us everything they had. Uh, those kids played their hearts out. Uh, we're very lucky and very fortunate. And I'm very proud of my kids. I looked in the huddle right before the fourth quarter started, and I was like, this is our season right here. We can either go home saying we wish we could have done stuff or we could dig in and get it done. And that's what we did tonight. Comebacks are tough. We just had to pull together in that last strip and really rely on our defense. On the Lewis Fitness and Performance scoreboard, Gerard rallies to beat Erie First Christian Academy 46 42, 17 points for Austin Barrett, 1,000 point score Aaron Collins with 12 for Erie First. Another 3A first round matchup touted host Northeast against Northwestern. Ms. Junior front row seats with this one in Northeast. Opening quarter, and for the pickers, they go right to Seth Fuller for points in the paint. He finished with nine. Back come the Wildcats. Jordan. Dohanic knocking down the mid-range jumper. He netted six points at the other end of the floor we go. Carter Hassan plug camping out on the left side wing. Left wide open. All money right there. He scored 13 points. More from Northeast. This time in transition. Brandon Perez gets the feed. Goes up strong. Gets the whistle as well. And Northeast goes on to win this one 62-48. to The Pickers advance to face Sharpsville in the quarterfinals next week. In Class 3A first round as well. On the Lewis Fitness and Performance scoreboard, it was Greenville over Seneca 50-37. Now it's time to set over to Tom Decker with much more highlights. Tom, take it away. Hey, thanks, guys. It's been well documented what the General McLean boys basketball team has done on Friday nights. The past seven weeks, they've played on the road each and every time. So fittingly, tonight they begin on the road as well. Lancer is taking on Slippery Rock for the Class 4A first round matchup. Start of the second half, Lancer's up 32-20. Slippery Rock's Jack Allen drives and scores right there. Next rocket possession, it's going to be Zach Thompson. He's going to connect from three-point land. That would cut it to within seven points. 
Lancers, though, they would respond back with a little triple ball of their own. It's going to be Eli Bruce knocking it down from deep. One of six three-pointers on the night for him. More from McLean this time. Bruce again, he's going to take it the length of the court, and he's going to score again. He had 21 points on the night to lead all scores. <clears throat> Excuse me. One more time for Jenna McLean. It's Alex Bruce finding Nate Jones underneath for the deuce. McLean beating up on Slippery Rock tonight, 63-49. to They move on, and they're going to face Harbor Creek on Thursday. More 4A action, a nice season for the Corey Beavers means they get to host Fort LaBeouf, and they did so tonight. Third quarter is where we pick it up. Corey's Lucas Saborski driving for two of his five points on the night. Then it's Regan James. He's going to steal the ball at the half court, looking for a score here, a little hesitation. Then he's going to finish. He also had five points on the night. Fort LaBeouf working that pick and roll. Joe Riley to Derek Black. He gets the hoop and the harm there. Back come the Beavers, though. Mike and Knapp to Taylor Willis. He had 29 points, three of them right there. Then it's going to be Knapp taking it himself. Tough shot for him. He had 11 on the nights as the Beavers down the Bison. 58-43, to they will take on Grove City next Thursday. Down to Conneaut we go now. Oil City was visiting the Eagles in Class 4A action. First quarter, Oilers going to work the ball down low. Holden Stahl finds Caden Maddox. Maddox with a nice move. To swish it right there. Next time down stall, well, he's not going to pass it. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to take it to the right shot there. He takes it off the glass. Cash, though, they've got some offensive firepower as well. Tanner Neiman with the spin move as he gets two buckets for the Eagles, and Kowalski adds another one down low for Conneaut, and it's going to be Cash advancing tonight. They hang on for the tough 54-50 to -50 win over Oil City. Cash gets Warren on Thursday. Up next, Titusville taking on George Jr. in Class 4A in Rocket Country tonight. Off the opening tip, it's going to be Titusville's Elijah Cullen to Elijah Perez. He drains the three from the corner. He led all scorers with 26 on the night. More from the Rockets. Willie Colon shots no good. Guy Anthony's got his back. He gets the putback. He had 13 points. A little later, they would reverse rolls. Guy Anthony's shot. It's off, but Cologne is there for the putback. Got to love having your buddies back. Titusville, though, they weren't even done yet. Laird Stover is going to find himself all alone, knocking down the triple here. Titusville all over George Jr. tonight. They take it 83-37. to They'll face Hickory on Thursday. Gentlemen, that's it for me. Back to you. Nicely done, Tom. Thank you so much. Now to Class 2A, Maplewood hosting West Middlesex and Guys Mills. Third quarter action, Maplewood's Joel Cox dishing here. Jonathan Nagiot with the reverse finish puts the Tigers in front by seven. West Middlesex with the answer here, Luke Adderholt. Driving down the lane, takes the foul, takes the finish as well for the easy bucket. No foul, my mistake. From the home team here, <laughs> Cox being patient, not even close to enough contact. Looking for an open man, and an opening comes open instead, converts the hoop and the harm. And a little later, it's Cox one more time here, spinning and winning. And how many more spins does he have in him? Well, just enough. As Maplewood wins this one close, 58-56, they'll face Farrell next Friday. More D10 2A scores for you. And Union City falls 49-41 at Wilmington. Sagertown down at Lakeview falls 55-26. And out in Youngsville, the Eagles get the better of the Mercer Mustangs, 57-45. A regular season matchup for Cathedral Prep as they took on St. Ignatius at the Joanne Mullen Gymnasium on senior night. Action from the... Late portions of the first quarter, Alfonso Pickens with the quick hands and steal, plus the lay-in just to beat the quarter. Ramblers were down 13, then it's Michael Lucarotti getting the ball and attacking the rack for two of his 17 points. Wildcats kept up at the other end, though. John Efforts gets the kick out, rattles home the three-pointer. He netted 16 points. More from the visitors. This time it's Chase Toppin driving easily to the rim. Almost no defense here as they parted the ways. He finished with 13. Prep loses 73 to 50. Next up for the Ramblers, a matchup with Meadville in the District 10 Championship game on Tuesday night. To the ice we go. Men's college hockey with Mercyhurst opening a weekend series with Army. Black Knights leading 2 to 1 late in the second period off the faceoff win. Army keeping the puck in the offensive zone and eventually it's Dominic Franco collecting the loose puck in front and scoring. That made a 3 to 1 Army. The Black Knights go on to outscore Mercyhurst four times in that period alone, and they go on to win this one 
five to one. Same two teams at it tomorrow night. Two teams right at the top of the standings in the CHA as we take a look at the women's action. It's Maggie Knott and Merciers taking on Robert Morris at the Ice Center this afternoon. No score in the first period until Maggie Knott helps put the Lady Lakers up a goal here with the early action. Emily Pinto the assist. Big afternoon once again for Emma Newton, who takes advantage of a turnover here, scores the first of her two goals. 2 0 lead for the home team. And then right around five minutes to play in the third period, a 3 2 lead for Merciers, but short handed trying to get out of the woods here. And Michelle Robillard comes up with a Huge play, taking it on the breakaway. Look at this. The sick, nasty goal. 4 2 lead for Mercier. Stay hang on for the 5 3 win to open up the weekend series when they'll be back at it tomorrow. Honestly, it was just great to get that energy up, get the girls going, get, get them, um, I don't know, excited to play the game. We play way much more, we play way better when we're happier and having a good time. And with that early start, um, it was easy to keep going and keep battling. Playoffs are getting closer, so of course we want to win these games. And it's, we love these games, so it's, these are really important for us. We did a lot of good things, and that's what you got. When you got two real good teams playing together, you know, you need some bounces, but you got to do the little things right. And uh, we were pretty sound all night.